we are, and, and I, I'm kind of rethinking plans for later, so I think you don't have to get up and move 17 times. If you um, want to just turn your chairs around, for those of you who um, have your backs to me, or you can keep your backs to me, I, I, don't, I won't take it personally at all. Um, okay, so who would like to volunteer to share? Um, let's start with the last one here. Let's start with, <clears throat> what do you think the baby's perspective could be here? What, what do you think is she's a, Molly's feeling or experiencing? And you guys can just raise your hands if you want to share or um, shout it out if that's okay. I have my basic needs met. I have somebody to hold me, but my mom's not where I want her to be. And, uh, and maybe depressed and confused about what's what's this environment. It's been two weeks, but uh, mom's here, but not. What yeah. told what what told you that the reaching at the the looking at her for attention well, part? Well, looking at her, <clears throat> kind of disengaged. The child looks towards mom on at least two, two, two of the examples in here. Uh, underdeveloped, but can't sit up, so mm -hmm. not stimulated, not not being encouraged to interact, etc. Okay, great. Anyone else want to talk about what Molly's Molly's perspective? Are you nodding or you're in agreement or because you want to talk? OK. okay. <laughs> See how, how I finesse that? Yeah. Very well. We also seems to be like, um, and again, since she's only been in the foster home for two weeks, the security issue, I think, because she was immediately were, um, frightened when the, the GAL came into the room. So she doesn't seem to be secure necessarily with people around that she doesn't question. And part of that could be developmental, but it seems like maybe because of some of the history that we learned about, it could be because of that. Okay, great, great. Anyone else on, on Molly? Judge? We don't think we know anything. Uh, we've got a, our group three thinks we've got a serious problem in, uh, in knowledge. We don't know the history of the baby. We don't know how long they've been in care. Um, we don't have any idea whether it's been three months or two weeks. We didn't see the two weeks issue as to that. Okay. Uh, we're not sure that the baby knows who mom is, even though she looks at mom. That, uh, it looks to me or it looks to us that the foster mom is the one that's supposedly handling it. We are really concerned about that relationship between mom and the foster mom, the conflict that's been raised there, depending on how long we've been there. We just don't have any knowledge. Uh, All right, let's say, just to give you a little knowledge, because like I said, when you do these scenarios, there's, sometimes people see it one way and sometimes it's like, oh, wait, what about this, what about this? It's hard to not overanalyze them, <laughs> but let's say, so the way I was thinking of it is that Molly uh, had been living there with her mother. They're in a maternal foster home, so mom is a ch uh, foster child who had a baby while in foster care and she's in a foster home that allows the mom to be with their baby. So ostensibly Molly's pretty not pretty much knows Jane. Then you have some real issues because Molly looks at doesn't look at foster mom. There's no stimulation in the crib, in the playpen with a rattle that's too big, underdeveloped. If foster mom was doing her job ten months you wouldn't have that kind of you would hope you wouldn't see that kind of physical mm -hmm. issues going on. And you would think the she's the foster mom. So just to add, to, she's the foster member. Molly's now just coming into the system. But yes, you're right. She's been right. She's been exactly, exactly. No, these are. This is. Keep going. Don't let me. She's not crying very much, and then I mean, could that be a kind of uh, attachment disorder? That's a question you'd have to investigate further, right? I mean, like, I don't know that <clears throat> answer as an attorney. <clears throat> so you would have to go to someone and say, this is what I'm seeing. Help me understand it. What are some of the possi possible? I don't know that the foster, yeah, we're, we're kind of in agreement. We don't know if the foster mother's really any better than the mother. Okay. 
Okay. Some of the things that we talked about good, here good, was good. not understanding where she's at developmentally or physically. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a condition that she has physically that could be contributing to this, or is it environmental and lack of stimulation, dynamics, whatever that could be? So just, I think we're back here with that group is there's not enough information okay. for us to draw an actual conclusion at this time. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. That's okay because that's somewhat real life, right? I mean, that you could walk in and. Possibly you'd have some medical records by now, possibly not, depending on what's available. So, um, but in terms of, one, one thing that, that I'm hearing, and I'm going to hit on it later, but I think it's worth pointing out now, is the whole concept of being able to go in with an objective approach. Being able to go in and, and maybe saying, well, I don't know why, this is what I'm seeing. And I don't really know why this is happening. I need to learn more about why. Here are some of the possibilities. She might, foster mom might not be stimulating her. Foster mom might be trying to have Tara, the mom, take care of her and trying to coach her. We, we don't know much at this point. But, um, but ex all excellent points. You're all, you're all, thank you for thinking through it like that. I think it's, it's really great points. Let's move up to the, to the um, top bullet. And um, uh, someone who hasn't spoken already, talk about, what, you, what you're seeing in Molly's, well, we talked about Molly's relationship with mom. I think you hit on that. Molly's relationship with the foster mother and the quality of her, her daily environment. Anyone else want to add? I think you, you touched upon some of that. Anyone want to add to that? Anything that, that you think you observed based on, on the scenario that wasn't hit on? One thing we talked about and I was thinking about is that, you know, it looks like the child is trying to interact with their mother and due to the stress and having everything going on, maybe the mom is responding, but the child isn't really interacting or attempting to interact with the foster mom. So maybe it's just all an act since the, you're there, the guardian ad litem is there observing, and maybe it, the foster mom doesn't really, isn't the one who's providing the care. Maybe when nobody else is around, it is really care of the mom. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We talked about uh, an 18-year-old mother, um, foster mom, greets the door, goes and gets the baby, brings the baby in, has the book, does all this, and mom's not required to do anything. But maybe there's a, you know, along with her education, she obviously needs a lot with parenting, but an independent living portion of it where she's using foster mom as a crutch, where instead of foster mom saying, go get Molly, bring her in here, mm -hmm, here's a mm -hmm. book that you can read with Molly, she's mm -hmm. just doing everything mm -hmm. and almost serving as Molly's mother instead of, uh, holding Tara accountable or having consequences for Tara uh, to do some parenting herself. That's something we Great point. With the relationship between foster mother and child. Great point. You pick that up. Okay, great. And I guess our feeling was that that's how it normally goes, that um, Jane is normally in control because a normal 10 month old sitting across from her mother who does do the normal day to day parenting wouldn't have a set with a stranger in the room on Jane's lap. She would be reaching for her mother, crying out for her mother. Not as easily soothed when my children were like little monkeys attached to you. They wouldn't like go to let anyone else mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the room if there was any. Especially in that age range, yeah. right? That, that So uh, our thought was that with as comfortable as she was, how she was soothed by Jane, that this is a normal, that she normally takes care of mm -hmm. her needs. Mm -hmm. That yes, she has a bond with mom, you know, the smile, but more like a sisterly bond. Mm -hmm. like, hey, I recognize you bond, but not mm -hmm. necessarily a maternal bond. So. Excellent points. Anyone else on that? Okay. Um, let's go then to the middle bullet point there. Are you ready to formulate a position? If not, what more do you need to know that you haven't learned from observing? Okay, we've touched on that. Let's touch on, we, we kind of know, I think, what, what we don't know, which is an important thing to know, what you don't know, I think, especially in, in formulating an objective opinion or assessment, rather, of the situation. Because if we substitute what we think we know for what we don't know, then we're really inserting our, our subjective ideas about things into the deci your decision making process, right? So let's talk about how do you get some of this information um, and, and maybe if there's challenges in your community with getting some of the information that you need to know, we can talk about that too. I, I don't know that part. So I'm going to just go around the room. You guys want to talk about that? about things that we think we need to know or where we get it. Yeah, where, where would you get it? Um, well, you'd want to set up some sort of appointment through HHS or somebody to, to 
study your developmental um, delays that she seems to be having to okay. be able to pick up uh, rattles and stuff. We also talked about wanting to know what's been offered to dad or to dad's parents. Okay, he's dad. Still just 18 years old or whatever. Right. He's still just a kid. Um, we don't. You, um, you know, it says that he hasn't been at visits or provided financial support. One, we don't really even know that paternity has been established, although we assume it, no, it let's, has been. Let's assume for sake of argument. Yeah, um, but, but that's a good point. Definitely would want to be asking the questions as to what's been offered to him. Uh, yeah, and the and the, her older child. You know, is that what you're yeah. You can you can talk. Oh yeah, we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we had talked about wanting to talk to her previous Tara's previous lawyer or guardian ad litem oh, about good. what happened with her first kid. Because if she thinks the exact same thing's just going to happen, she might be distancing herself to avoid protect her herself. Just losing another baby. Right. So that was one thing. We Great. Yeah. Great. Anything to add? On the table. I'll take volunteers. I think that works better. I, my <laughs> biggest exchange of information is in these team meetings. HHS typically has a lot of the records. Um, the cost is probably they can get the records. So I think it just goes in who, whether you have a good, solid HHS worker who is a team leader who can have this stuff mm -hmm. available. I mean, I know in, in an instance, <coughs> I had um, a year and a half worth of looking for a social security card. Uh -huh. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It could have been done in a week. There's mm -hmm. no reason to spend this kind of resources. And you have three people trying to do it. Right. When you finally sit down and say, Oh, well, I thought I was working on that. Right. So the exchange of information at these team meetings, I think that's the one, the first thing that should be addressed is who does she doctor with, who do, you know, mm -hmm. the dentist or whatever, and where, where is she at with that, and can I get those records? Right. And that's something it sounds to me like you can work real closely with the CASA who may be able to get some of that a little bit more easily or you could divide and conquer um, some of the, the, the history part of, of, of Molly's life. Great. Anyone from there? Sir? One piece of information we thought would be important that you could get that day, if it hadn't been done yet, is to separate foster mother out of the picture. Uh, get in another room with uh, Tara and Molly and see how Tara interacts with Molly when foster mom's not in the picture. Uh, it may be there is a bond here and that it's just the hostility between the foster mother and, and Tara when foster mother's in the room that, that creates this problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe when the two of them are together, they interact very well together. Maybe not. Certainly. Right, right, not right. That's sort of an unknown. Possibility. It's an unknown so to that's, you. That's another piece of information. Very good. We gained right there, but we don't have. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Very important. Anyone else want to? Well, I think we wanted to talk to a paternal grandmother. Um, obviously, there's some history there, and Tara has taken along with what Jeff said. Tara's taken uh, the son, or taken Molly to see the son four or five times and talked to the paternal grandmother and see how how uh, mom's interacting with Molly again without the foster mm -hmm. foster mom present and see how she interacts with the, the son and, and the, the newborn the ten month old I guess um, with the foster mom not I think right. the paternal grandmother would have some insights into that. Great. Excellent. We took a step farther than that just the older child but a big piece we don't have is that Tara is still a juvenile and mm -hmm. how long has she been in the system? Why is she in the system? Mm -hmm. What's her relationship with her parents? Because you may have possible relative placement that may be, have a better relationship with Tara than foster mom does with Tara because obviously right. that's a rocky relationship. We don't anticipate it's a good one if, if she's in the system and has been in the system for 15 years. But, that's a big piece. Really. Excellent. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. You're not. You're not her attorney. You don't know. Sir. In addition to trying to assess mom and child, is a, if you can identify some kind of provider, uh, service provider who has uh, education experience in early childhood development, and have them observe mom and child interacting for a professional steps. observation to get a totally independent documentation of this is what how we assess that uh, the other thing that, that's really left out and although it's portrayed badly is what about dad uh, yeah he's you know kind of sole charge against him or whatever and, and you know he's you know delinquency or but does dad want to be involved mm -hmm. and is he some kind of asset here also contribute mm -hmm. to Molly and 
the long term development. Right. Excellent. You guys are good. I have some concerns Does about how long the mother has been in a uh, foster child. Mm -hmm. if she had the baby while she's in this foster home. So then I want right. to then I want to find out why this baby is is so delayed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom's history. You know, mom's history was it something that happened at birth, or is it because the foster mother and her are both Inadequate. neglecting right. the child? So I can't help but notice when you ask questions about the child, the foster mother says, "Well, she's not sleeping at night. She's fussy, but she's eating well." Tells me the mother's not interacting mm -hmm. with the child, but maybe the foster mother isn't allowing it. Mm -hmm. Right. There's 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 a lot of possibilities in the air. Maybe it's not an appropriate foster home. Okay. For you to We're going to end on that note because our next scenario kind of picks up with challenges in the foster home. <laughs> I am so sorry I've made many of you wait to use the restroom this long. Let's take a, let's see like what time it is now. Okay, so let's come back. Can we be back at 5 to 11? Can we do that?